This is KGB Musical Instruments, a small, passion-filled workshop filled with musical history. Opened in 1984 by Keith Benyon, the store continues to serve the needs of all guitarists from hip bands such as Living Colour to the locals just bringing in their guitars for a service. Hi, I'm Keith. I'm the founder of KGB Musical Instruments. We are a guitar makers, repairers and customizers. Um, we were established in 1984 and at the moment there is me, Alan and Barry. We make up the team here at KGB Music. Based in the heart of Merseyside, just over the water from Liverpool, the store has attracted a wide variety of customers. Through the professional and hard-working nature of the staff, KGB Music continues to flourish by bringing the best music out of people's instruments. I work at KGB Music. I've been working for KGB Music um, for most of my life. I've always had a fascination with guitars. I started playing guitar when I was very young. I think I was probably around about eight years old and actually started playing guitar. Um, and as I developed as a musician or as a guitarist, um, I got more and more interested in, in the workings of that. And that really came about through wanting to get more from a guitar. Making guitars really is one of the few areas left where hand skills are still very useful and necessary and one of the few things left really that still benefits a lot from being handcrafted. During the last 20 years or so that the business has been running, we've had a number of premises. Um, we've tried out different mixes of retail as well while we've been going along, but it's all mainly been workshop based. Since moving to Pacific Road, KGB Music has neighboured the Pacific Roads Art Centre, a venue where local bands and musicians performed on a regular basis many of whom who were regulars at the store. However, in 2011, the Arts Centre closed down, leaving KGB Music to stand alone on Pacific Road. The business started very, very small. I mean, it is a small business, you know, we're, we're essentially a three-man team. The work team has remained really quite stable now um, for 15 years. Most of what we do is still uh, done in the traditional fashion, using hand tools. Um, we have a few machine tools, and more recently I've started looking into using CNC, uh, computer-controlled machinery, just on a small scale, really. Um, our customer, customer base has grown, and that's obviously down to... Um, for, well, the main reason is because we because of the level of service that we offer and the word of mouth. A lot of our customers come through that way. So the, the business has developed a lot in that sense. In terms of the quality and how far we'll go, really, to deliver, um, you know, uh, something that is, you know, beyond the customer's expectations, as opposed to the best way to describe it, is we will always go over and above. And it doesn't matter whether it's a relatively... Um, inexpensive guitar or instrument and even if the jobs you know relatively small it doesn't it doesn't matter it's the same amount of detail throughout everything that we do and we do that and we do that consistently and that's one of the reasons why we've achieved the customer base that we've actually achieved over the years Today, KGB Music undertakes a wide variety of work, such as guitar setups, repair work, refretting, and even working on more unusual stringed instruments. We caught up with Fred Arnell, a long-term customer at KGB Music. 
Hi, my name is Fred Arnell. I'm a full-time guitar tutor. Uh, I also play in a uh, in a duo, uh, which uh, is comprised of uh, vocals and guitars. Uh, this is one of the instruments that I'm using here, which uh, Keith has uh, modified, which I use for a performance work. I also use it within teaching as well, but it's mainly its main function is for live use um, for on stage. I've known Keith for many, many years. Uh, I remember when he, his first shop that was set up on Conway Street, um, and uh, I, I took my first electric guitar there, and, and I think Keith did a setup for me on it so that it, it played a lot better. I bought this particular guitar because it was smaller, three-quarter size guitar, um, but these generally don't come with pickup systems in, so um, I, I ordered this specific uh, pickup system for Keith to fit. So this particular system allowed me to do things like play guitar and also create guitar bass sounds as well as other sounds. Um, but what we've got here, we've got a standard guitar sound, which you'll, if I just turn off from it. Okay. And I've also got a, another sound underneath, which is a, a bass guitar sound. And this, the pedal is programmed so that these two strings here uh, are uh, producing a bass guitar sound, which I'll show to you now. So you can hear it acoustically from the instrument, but over by the amplifier. So if I now blend that with the original guitar sound. Okay, so suddenly your sound gets a lot bigger. You've got this bass sound underneath as well. Now if the guitar hadn't been modified, there was no way that would be able to produce a, a, a big sound like that. It just, it just wouldn't be possible. There's a lot of day-to-day -day stuff that we do, in, in, you know, on a week-to-week -week basis, if you like. But you know, there are things that come up once in a while that we're asked to do. I mean, again, just on the subject of custom builds, we, we did a couple of um, guitars which were based on uh, the Prince guitars. One was the Model C guitar, and the other one was the Symbol guitar. They both turned out very well. They were really quite a challenge. The the required. Uh, some extensive research, a lot of hand carving on both instruments, um, a lot of design work on the construction of the instruments. But I think one of the, the nicest aspects of this job is often um, the, the guitars as they're coming near to completion. Uh, we sort of lose sight of them a little bit and, and of what we've achieved, um, but then they leave with the customer. Um, and then come back in uh, a month or two later, perhaps for for a final settling down. And uh, we open the case, and it's it's wow, we've built that, and it looks really good. One of the biggest projects we did was a twin neck that we did, and that was for a Genesis tribute band that I was was actually in. And it was quite a tall order, really, because of the nature of what we were doing, uh, and we didn't have the original to work from. Um, and it was a, it was a big project, and it was um, it had to be right. So yeah, so it was a it was a big job, and it was a it was a proud moment when it was uh, when it was completed, and it was identical to the one that it was supposed to be. It was uh, amazing, really, to see. Here at KGB Music, we do offer an absolute full range of uh, guitar-related services. Um, we can do anything really from changing a string um, up to a complete custom-built guitar to the highest standards. The most common jobs that we do range from, as I mentioned before, a, a simple things, you know, as in like the setups. The setups are straightforward, you know. Everybody wants the guitar to play better and, you know, over the years, the guitar has been maintained to ensure that the guitar is at its optimum. So we, that's something that's common, and it is a day-to-day -day job, you know. A lot of the bread and butter work we sort of do, a lot of the stuff that comes through from week to week, uh, tends to be setups, refrets, electrical problems, fitting new pickups, uh, new hardware, that sort of thing. And then there's things where we do, obviously, the refrets. I mean, I think we probably there's probably at least a couple of refrets that go through the shop per week. And that's, you know, that's regularly. 
Um, and then we get the, you know, the another very typical one is uh, if you know for guitars that are a neck break or headstock break. Um, that's a common one. Again, we probably see at least one of them a week. Yeah, we've got quite a bit of work on at the moment. There's a couple of refrets going on in the shop at the moment. There's a Maca Ferry guitar there that I'm making a new neck for, which is a longer scale length than the original. And um, we've also um, there's a, a vintage Gibson acoustic in the workshop at the moment that's come in. The neck has crept forward over the years, so the action is rather high. Well, in fact, the guitar is pretty much unplayable. Um, the, this is quite an old guitar now, and, and over the years it's probably been left somewhere warm or somewhere damp. Um, and the neck's crept forward over the years, so that it's got a, a very high action. Um, so what we've had having to do here is we're resetting the neck, so we've um, taken the old neck off with the application of heat and steam, um, which has been uh, it was quite tricky actually getting the old neck off. Um, and we've had to take the end of the fretboard off at the same time. Um, so now I'm just preparing to glue the neck back on, um, and I've recut the neck joints to to give it a lower action. Um, so I'm, I'm just weighing it up now, mixing the glue, and, um, and the next job now is to um, glue the neck back on, then we'll glue the end of the fretboard back on, and then uh, Alan will be refretting it. Um, another job we've just got in recently um, is a replica um, George Lynch Bones guitar. Um, this has been CNC routed in the United States, the basic outline of the design. Um, it's still quite rough though, so I'll be undertaking um, a fair bit of hand carving on the instrument to refine the detail, um, shape it a bit more. Um, as it is supposed to be, um, and then I'll be um, finishing the guitar. When you get something like this where um, the likelihood of actually seeing the same thing, you know, in the flesh as it were, and being able to hold it, and uh, it is very unlikely. So you're left then with being out, you know, with the only option being able to um, get the instrument as close as possible is to use photographs um, and scale it up from that really. So that's that's interesting. And then that's really, you know, Keith's domain. Um, that's what that's what Keith does and he does it extremely well. And it shows in the you know the guitars that are, are turned out. Okay, so this is um this is a uh, guitar developed by uh, Ned Steinberger and uh, it's a headless guitar which means it doesn't have a head on it, all the tunings, tuners are down here. Um, this is my main electric guitar, I don't really use any other guitar, any other electric guitars now, um, because everything that I need is on this guitar. Uh, originally, uh, it was just a, like a standard electric guitar, it had three standard pickups in it. Uh, if you take a look by the bridge here, you'll see this plastic strip going across. Um, that was where I originally had a Roland um, magnetic um, MIDI pickup fitted. 
and it's had um, extensive um, work done to it. Uh, all the controls that you see on top, key fitted. Um, there's some extra panels on the back as well. Um, if that was taken off, you'd see all the circuit boards that are inside. Um, but anyway, it enables me to produce um, electroacoustic sounds with this control here. Um, I can control virtual sounds from there. And I can also control the original magnetic sounds as well. I can blend the whole lot together. Throughout the years, KGB Music has served a diverse clientele. From people just starting out in the world of music, right up to veterans within the music industry. Obviously because of our location, you know, we're, we're literally just a, a boat away or a train ride away from, from Liverpool. Liverpool has got a wealth of very well-known um, bands <clears throat> and musicians. Um, obviously all the obvious ones, certainly uh, Cast, the Lars, the Lightning Seeds, um, the Coral. We've done work for John Head. I think John was with uh, Shaq. Um, done work for Gomez, the list goes on. Uh, we've actually done work for Peter Green, um, Vernon Reed from Living Colour, John McNally from The Searchers. It, it's very extensive, the, the list of customers that we do work for. The workshop has been open for 30 years now. Although many of the traditional methods have remained, the shop still continues to look for new and innovative ways to satisfy the needs of their customers whilst maintaining their famed high standards. Some of the stuff now, I've actually got a small CNC machine as well that I'm starting to use, um, which means really that I can do now undertake some really quite elaborate um, inlay work without it um, taking a ridiculous amount of time. Yeah, uh, this is just a little practice piece for an inlay that we need to do for somebody. Uh, I'm going to inlay the, the pocket now, which will actually take a little mother of pearl inlay. Um, so it will get quite noisy when I start the machine up. Um, and uh, This is a little CNC machine that I've put together myself out of various uh, components and bits and pieces that I've picked up along the way. And uh, it actually does work quite well. Okay, so uh, let's start it up now. Okay, so that's now ready for us to cut some uh, mother of pearl out on the same machine to inlay into that. That's just the pocket, um, and this would be on the headstock of uh, like a Gibson um, F5 mandolin or a Gibson L4 is what this particular inlay is for. Okay, yeah, this is uh, just some parts I'm getting together to make a larger uh, CNC router, um, which will be big enough to uh, certainly carve a guitar body, do rough carving on next. Um, I've still got a few things to get for it, yeah. And it's hopefully something that I will get on with uh, this year, really. Over the years, the workshop has come a long way. As the team continued to adapt and take on new challenges, who knows what the future may hold? Um, in the future, yeah, hopefully we'll carry on pretty much as we are down here at Pacific Road. We've got a nice workshop here, nice clientele. We're easily accessible. Um, we intend to keep the standard of work that we do at least as high as it is now, possibly better. And the standard of what we do, really speaking, is as good as is available anywhere in the world. But now it's up to Keith and the team to carry on servicing instruments helping artists, teachers and enthusiasts bring light into the world. 
After seeing the work that the team do at KGB Musical Instruments, we now know what happens behind the strings.